Okay, in this video today, I'm going to show you how to shim up the T56 because it's definitely a lot more confusing than other transmissions, such as the T5. So, I did a little bit of research on the internet because I know you need a special uh, special Ford tool to do this. And uh, I found this guy right here, giving credit to 94 Camaro Z28LT1 is his username on LS1 Tech. So, um... He came up with quite the ingenious way of making his own tool, and uh, the instructions and everything can be found online, although you can just pause it on the video, and this is it right here. Basically, you want to go to a hardware store. I went to McFaddendale's, and you need a uh, M12 by 175 rod, two M12 nuts, one of the long coupler nuts, and some kind of spacer. I just used a bronze spacer that I got there also. And uh, you're going to make this tool right here. Okay, you're going to have to cut it to length. I haven't done that on mine yet, as you will see. But uh, it, it's able to test uh, the counter shaft play and the counter shaft extension play. And you won't have to buy the expensive tool from Ford, and there will be no guesswork. All right? So I'll, I'll walk you outside. I've made the tool. I still have not cut mine to length yet. But I will show you how it works just so you get the idea. Here it is right here. Now I do have of course my spacer and coupler nut which will be used to check the actual counter shaft play. Um, I have to take the back back down to do that so I'll show you how this works first. Now I'm going to cut the rod a little bit shorter. That's the length that comes in. I just threaded it in here to see how it works. I pulled the plug out, right? And I just simply threaded that rod right into the hole. And when you thread the rod into the hole, it goes straight into that counter shaft extension. You can see it move. See? And that's how you're going to check your end play on the counter shaft extension. Of course, you're going to want to bolt the tail shaft on first. And before you do that, go ahead and remove the reverse idler. It's got a Torx bit on it. As soon as you remove the, the reverse idler, then you can pull this out and there's a little shim right underneath it you get the shim pack uh they're all over the internet ebay has them i think uh the gearbox etc um so as soon as you get that reverse idler off bolt a couple bolts into your tail shaft throw it on okay and uh of course first you have to do the counter shaft which i haven't done yet I'll show you next, which is reverse order, but assuming you've already done the counter shaft and that's all shimmed up, then you're ready to do this step last. Once again, I'm just showing you now because I've already got the tail disassembled and I wanted to show you this moving when I pull in and out of the rod. And that's all you're going to do, essentially. Cut your rod down, but leave it long enough so where you can grab a handle on it. Then you're going to grab your favorite tool uh, for micrometer. Magnetic base. Um, they don't work too well on aluminum. Uh, they don't work at all, but I got this at Harbor Freight. Works really nicely. I just clamp it onto here, right? And then so I'll cut the rod down so that I can grab it, but then so that the tip is also going to be here. I'll pull it in and out, and that's how I know exactly how much shim I'm going to need to put in there for my counter shaft play, um, counter shaft extension play. So um, that's how you do that, and uh, in a little while. I will come back and show you how the actual counter shaft play works. You're going to use the same tool. Okay, so here we are to check the actual counter shaft play. Quite ingenious, I have to say. Right, that bushing needs to be small enough to fit into the hole so that it presses up against the plug. Oh, sorry. So that it presses up against the counter shaft extension inside. Right, and tighten these nuts. Okay, then on the other side, the long coupler nut goes in and gets tightened against the main shaft. So all you're doing essentially is sandwiching a rod inside the counter shaft so you can move it just like that. See how that moves in and out? So now what I'm going to do, now of course there's no shim on that. So now here's what I'm going to do is I haven't cut this rod down yet, but I can... I can test it from this side. Stick with me for a second here. Okay, so then I'm just gonna go ahead 
Put that on there. Okay, sorry for the wobbly camera. Hold on. All right, bam, just like that. Reset my needle. Let's see how much play I got on this puppy. Got about uh, 28 thousandths. Right? Right at 29 thousandths. Now this is the shim that was in here before I rebuilt it. Let's see how big this shim is. I'm gonna put the phone down for one second. Okay, the shim that was in here was at 39 thousandths. Now I have 29 thousandths of play. Somebody had, well, I did put all new bearings on this too. So either somebody had the wrong shim on it or uh, the newer bearings are tighter, which is probably more likely. Now this is very critical that you shim both the counter shaft and the counter shaft extension. Okay, now this is my micro polished and cryo treated trans that's why it's so pretty anyway it's important that you do both of these because i have I had one come back where it was whining in uh, the gears and that's because what is happening is when you put all the new bearings on they have tighter clearances sometimes and uh it actually um put too much preload onto the counter shaft and the counter shaft extension so uh what happened is you can even um turn this sometimes and if the counter shaft uh, is too tight on the bearings then um, and on the shims, then it's going to be like a lot harder to turn. And then if you pull the front cover off and then take the shim out for the counter shaft extension and put it back together, suddenly it becomes easier to turn. That means everything's not shimmed right, but the problem is, is you have way too much uh, force on the bearings and it's going to cause bearing failure and of course it's going to cause your transmission to whine. So you always want to make sure you do all your shimming. Now, as I said before, this is the easy part, you know, just, um, you're supposed to stand this up. I put a giant hole in my workbench to be able to stand up transmissions. Um, it <laughs> didn't look like that when I started, it keeps getting bigger. Anyway, um, you're supposed to stand it up and then just push up on the main shaft and have a micrometer on here. That sometimes is as difficult. I have had success by literally just putting the micrometer on here and moving it in and out with it laying flat. Um... And I've had success with that. So, anyway, there's how to shim your transmission. Good luck with your build. All right, so I showed you how to measure the counter shaft and play. I put a 27,000 shim in there, which I got from the shim pack that I had. Okay, now I took the uh, original counter shaft extension shims out. I pulled the reverse idler off, like I told you. Okay, be very careful with it. Those bolts strip out very easily so you've got to uh <laughs> to, here i'll tell you what bit it is it's the same one as the um this right here t40 anyway uh you've got to really what i did is i took the counter shaft uh, at tail housing flipped it upside down put it on here and then put a lot of weight on the nut as i turned it if you don't then you're going to strip that nut out and you're screwed and you won't get the reverse idler off so I went ahead and I checked the thickness of the original counter shaft extension shims because when I put it all together, I was having issues with the input um, turning too much. Uh, it was too stiff, I should say, which means that the the barrier, as I thought, 61 thousandths, I'm thinking that's probably was way too many shims on there. So uh, I've got it, got it assembled here. I put my, uh, my rod in that I still am too lazy to cut can't see it but you can hear it that's the play so all you got to do now <laughs> is put your dial indicator on the end of the rod I'm gonna have to cut it down I'm not gonna get any kind of accuracy this far out so assuming that you have it cut down like right here or whatever you'll put that dial indicator on here and just like that and that's it man and uh, whatever you measure on your dial indicator then you grab those shims from your pack Shim it up, 
measure it again if you get no more end play then you're going to go ahead and silicone rtv it all up more tip that i needed to show you when i first assembled it there was no in and out plan i know that that's not accurate so i went ahead and took a hammer you know big sledge or something you know and i went ahead and you know i held it with my hand whacked on this a couple times so it'll seat everything on the inside then i went ahead and i bench shifted it i don't have an actual gto shifter so i just used this but uh bench shifted it in and out of fifth and sixth gear and then uh as soon as i did that then i came back here and it loosened up so if you just go ahead and tighten the case tighten everything up check the end plate not going to be accurate make sure you do that I wanted to close out with showing you what I did. I finally cut the rod down. I just used, you know, a, a grinder. I put the nuts on before I uh, grinded it away. And uh, you could use a hacksaw blade, whatever. Right, and I just gave myself enough room to grab. Now the problem is, it's a bit flimsy. I'm almost thinking maybe if we put that shim or the spacer inside here, that would keep it from doing that. Very hard to take a reading, so I've done it like a hundred times. But uh, you can see the needle move. It's hard to hold the camera. But I got about 24 thousandths play. So since you want to be exact, what you can try doing is go a little bit under when you think you found. And see if you have any play. Like 24 thousandths. So maybe I'll try sticking an 18 or 20 in there and see if there's just a smidge of movement. Uh, but like I said, you can tell if you put too much in then suddenly this becomes stiff because it stiffens up the whole assembly. But, you know, that's not scientific. You want to make sure that you use the proper numbers. So I'm pretty sure I got a 22, 24,000. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in about a 17, 18. And um, I should have just a hair of play. And if I do, that'll confirm that my reading here is exactly what I thought it was at about 22, 24,000. So anyway, thanks again. Bye.